Stugatz here is your home an ADT home. If not, then listen up. You need to get to ADT to help protect against break-ins, fire, even carbon monoxide. And now for a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month for the most trusted name in home security. That's just a dollar a day. You spend way more than a buck on your morning coffee. ADT is the first security company to help you keep safe at home and when you're on the go with the new ADT Go app. ADT Go has some great features like a family locator, private messaging, automatic check-ins, and safe driving reports. It even includes an SOS button with 24-7 emergency response. And if you need more of a reason to buy, you get ADT Go with a purchase of any security system. Seriously, guys, it's a great deal. Protect yourself and your family. Do it right now. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. ADT, tested, trusted, proven, with 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply, excludes taxes and fees, applies to traditional services only, certain markets excluded, license available at ADT.com. This is the Dan Lebator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. The Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz. I'm neither Dan nor Stu Gatz. I am the sultry sound in Dominique Foxworth. Welcome, everyone, to the Dan Levitard Show. We got a lot to cover today, Mike. You sound so good. <laughs> I, I was trying to turn what it up for you. What is this microphone? You have so much <laughs> bass in your voice, but it's not scary. It's uh, sexy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I try to soothe the people. I don't want them to come in because normally Dan comes in kind of hot. Uh, the, the Warriors have broken basketball. Blah, blah, blah. Nonsense, nonsense. The game changed on us all in front of our eyes. No, let's relax. Let's is enjoy it, what's going on right now. Is that how our shows start? <laughs> Dan is out the box. The Warriors have ruined basketball. Yeah. I mean, they've that's... changed the math. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that has been a theme since uh, we're kind of in a, a sports dull period. Like, I feel like that's like a, a Dan parachute when things get a little hectic and he doesn't really have much to talk about. We just get on the Warriors for rooted math. Uh, Stu comes in with some nonsense about, uh, Durant, uh, not having guts or whatever. And, and we go on that for a minute, but that's not what we're doing today. We're doing some nice, soft, sultry sounds, give you a little bass, talk some World Cup. Talk about that result we just saw. How you like that? Oh Matt? man, I'm in such a good mood. There is nothing that can ruin my day. Dominic Foxworth in the house. All right. We had a draft Woo! yesterday. Everyone was looking fly in the draft. Trey Young brought out the shorts. LeBron homage with the short suit. We had some, uh, uh, a Black Panther homage. I mean, I enjoyed the attire last night. Did you see anything that you liked? Was it just the hat? The, the floating hat? Was, was it the only yeah, thing? Lonnie Walker, baby. That's, uh, that's where it is for me. He rep- he's repping the U. <laughs> with the floating hat. So what about that um, Brazil match we just saw the end of there? Oh, man. That was going to be a great result for Costa Rica about eight uh, minutes in. Uh, documentary. You're going to give us a result? A documentary like Won't You Be My Neighbor from Morgan Neville, that kind of a filmmaker. <laughs> a story about Mr. Rogers. What I mean, that's the, amazing. What the? Mr. Rogers is Adnan. an iconic character. Is that? He's the guy that is was... Ad- oh, Let me just get this in here. Look, guys, what are you let me doing? Get up. So Mr. Rogers, the fact he was this iconic person who cared so much about children and wanted to this get back to This is not your show. This is a genial <laughs> Dan would not stand for this. Now listen, Dan's not here. Don't worry about it. Just let me finish. So the fact that you have a documentary now, this type of rancor and and regret and anger in the world, I'm telling you, won't you be my neighbor? Adnan, Adnan, Adnan. Adnan, Adnan. That's enough. That's chill, enough. Chill, That's chill. enough. You don't have to bust in, buddy. Dan's not here. You're welcome. Wait, 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 Relax. Hang on a second. I know, but he's still going to... Find a way no. to put me out of here, right? No, he can't. He can't do anything. He's gone. He's probably drunk on tequila. Stu's playing golf. Probably cheating. It's just me and you, baby. All show. How about that? You want to stick around? Well, I, hang on a second. You're offering me an opportunity to do all three hours of the Dan Lebertar show with Stu Gotts with you, Dominique, and the shipping container. Why not? We can do four. Let's. Who's after us? Let's I keep. Mean, yeah, a local hour. Yes. <laughs> can we do a local hour after? We're supposed to do the local hour. I mean, uh, Dan's out. That means Dominique's in charge. I guess. Man. I guess. Okay. All right. Put it on the ball. Give him. Give him. Give him. No. Put it on the ball. Do you don't, want Dan to do the entire show? Put it on the poll right now. Put it on the poll. No. Let's not put it on the poll. Don't put it on the poll. Look at me. Look at me. Okay. I'm looking at you. Captain. Trust me. I 
am the captain now. All right, Captain so Phillips. You're, you're, I love you're it. riding love with it. us, whole show. So you you the, you wanted to break in with some Mister Rogers, like that's yep. what you that's Listen, what you thought this audience wanted to hear is Mister Rogers documentary. The NBA draft was a bust, Dominic. Let's be real here, okay? I know we're going to talk about it a little bit because we have to, but literally there was no real excitement. More excitement was had by me last night watching this documentary called "Won't You Be My Neighbor" by Morgan <laughs> Neville. It's ninety nine percent on I'm Rotten not. Tomatoes. I'm telling you, okay. that is much more exciting than last night seeing DeAndre well, Ayton go one. So what is the what is the big twist in the Mr. Rogers documentary? Like did he have some <laughs> some torrid affairs? What's what is it? I mean, was he stealing those sweaters? Was he making them himself in a sweatshop in his basement? Give me he, something. He did not wear Angora sweaters like Ed Wood. He was not addicted to morphine like Bella Lugosi. He was not a rampant womanizer. He was not a destructive alcoholic. He was a kind man who wanted to give back to the community and give back to kids. He faced <sighs> A torrent of criticism, Dominique, later in life because uh, people said that it was his fault that kids felt too entitled because he told all these kids that they were special. And they go, it's Mr. Rogers' fault that so people that's, feel that's, this way. That's the big tension in the movie is that Mr. Rogers was too nice to kids. <laughs> yeah, miss me on that one, Adnan. <laughs> I'll send, I'll send you a I'll send movie. You, listen, I'll send you a screener come Oscar time. You got to you got an hour 34. I'll fire it up for you. I'm good. At what point does he jump out of a plane? Does he <laughs> take down some spies? Like give me something like that. I I, I will speak for the Stu guys army and that yeah. I do not want to watch a man in sweater be nice to kids. Like I'm there, good on that. There there was a lack of CGI and I will agree with you. It was about one stunt away from picking things up a little bit, but fair enough. NBA draft. Do you want to dive in? Last night we see DeAndre Ayton go 1, Marvin Bagley goes 2. Neither yeah. one is a surprise. What is interesting, just in terms of context, is that big men dominate again. Fifth time in the draft era since 1966, players taken 1-2 in the draft after averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds per game in their final college season. Both guys 2010. First time this has happened since Shaq and Alonzo Mourning went 1-2 in 1992. And you have a good take on this. We always talk about how guards and wings are so prevalent. Why are they so eager to get big men in the NBA? Yeah, it's not really a, a novel take necessarily. I feel like we've all, all of us like basketball outsiders. Maybe we need to get a basketball insider to explain it to us, but we all feel like we see the writing on the wall that the importance of a big man is waning and doesn't really make sense to draft them this high, particularly these big men because they aren't uh, great defenders. Like you get a guy, a big man who is maybe a rim defender, but I think what's more important is a big man who can defend on the perimeter so that you can't use screens to force him into switches and then kind of play him off the floor, which is what the Warriors and, and the Rockets kind of do to a lot of teams. They force you to uh, sit down your big man. And if they can't switch, which I, Again, I'm not a basketball insider, but nothing I've read is, has led me to believe that Bagley or Aiton are the type of guys that can stay out on the floor when the Warriors or a team like that go uh, go small. So I, I just don't quite get it. Maybe you could break it down for me, Adnan. No transcendent player in this draft. This, this feels like the draft of very wait, good. With, wait, 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 wait. With the exception, Luka Doncic. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. The fact that he's going to go to the Mavericks. So the Hawks draft and they trade his rights to the Mavericks for the rights to Trey Young. Doncic is the one guy, right? Because we haven't seen him, Dominique, but the guys who love him rave about him. They say, like, he's unbelievable. Like, how could this guy not be the consensus number one pick? He's the highest drafted international guard of all time. You think back when you know, Porzingis was facing criticism where the Knicks drafted him, ended up being, if not a steal, obviously an excellent selection, and hopefully he gets back healthy and does what he can for the Knicks. But to me, that's the only one that I go, all right, Doncic could be an absolute stud. Aiden, I expect him to be a very good NBA player. I expect Bagley to be a very good NBA player. But there's no guy that I'm saying all of a sudden the upside is so enormous that this guy is going to change the franchise, with the exception of Cool Hand Luca. Agree? Oh, I certainly agree. I mean, I think Luca is where you go with that because in my perception, he's the only guy that has that potential. And the European league that he was playing in is the best in the world next to the NBA from what I understand. You get MVP of that league at 19. I mean, you should go overall number one. It's a lot different than playing. Uh, you're playing amongst men, men who are probably many of them have played in the NBA. You play well there. You should go number one and you play in a way that I feel like he is not the most athletic or explosive, but his style of play fits the modern NBA, the way the NBA is going. It doesn't make sense to me, but I mean, I, I reserve my judgment because obviously the GMs in the NBA, well, I don't know about obviously, but you would assume that they know more. They make mistakes, but we all make mistakes, but it seemed like there was a consensus for him to drop the three suggests that a lot of people had uh, a lot of misgivings about what he was going to be, which, uh, 
doesn't quite make sense to me, given what we think, at least we know about the NBA, right? Well, speaking of drops, this is really the only thing that was truly notable. Is Michael Porter Jr., was supposed to be a lottery pick, could have been number one guy, goes 14th overall to the Nuggets. Now, obviously was hurt, so he missed the vast majority of the season. He came back, uh, you know, just for a brief cup of coffee there at the end. But... The, the whole thought was we didn't need to play anyways. Like if, if we didn't have to have the one and done, then Porter would have gone as a lottery pick. I was surprised that a back injury is all of a sudden going to push this guy down to 14th because eventually I would assume he's healthy. This to me just screams that I guess executives are, are concerned he's not going to get back to good health. But I mean, if you're the Denver Nuggets, that's a steal at 14. You would think so, but I mean, you were complaining. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to out you a little bit before sure. the show. You were complaining about a back injury. So I feel like <laughs> you, you're, you're giving me all this. Like, I mean, it's just a back injury. Like uh, uh, you, sir, who does not play professional basketball. <laughs> we're talking about your back as if it was, you want to tell the good people yeah, how sure. you injured well, your back. Uh, th- thanks, Dominic, for pointing this out. So I, I did not undergo lower back surgery on November 21st or playing two minutes in Missouri season opener. I've just accrued lower back pain from years of poor health and bad sleep. You know, here's what it is. And this is embarrassing, but I sleep on my stomach just like a like a s- small child. And if you do that, <laughs> no, no, for, no, 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 no. That's a normal human being. Oh, are there back sleepers? Okay, good. I appreciate the backup because the first thing I told the physical therapist is, he goes, "How do you sleep?" I said, "On my stomach." He goes, "Are you insane?" I said, "What do you mean by that?" He goes, "What?" The vast majority of Americans, and let's include Canadians if we don't mind, uh, sleep on their back or on their side. He goes, "If you sleep on your stomach, that's a dead recipe for lower oh. back pain." Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna include Canada, we have to include Mexico also. Like, I feel like all North America. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. we that's we fine. get the World Cup together, then we must also sleep together. I think. Guillermo, put it on works. the poll. Do people still sleep on their stomachs? Is that allowed once you're in your late thirties? No, I'm I'm completely serious. Like, I feel like this is one of those standing or sitters things where like <laughs> the people I did not know that people. No one here it is. This I just figured out. No one goes in with the intention of sleeping on their back. Sleeping on your back is a mistake fall asleep situation. That's a nap sitch. Like you're sitting there, you're watching the game, you fall asleep, you're on your back. Like anyone who goes in with the intention of going to sleep, you lay on your stomach. Maybe I'll give you a side, but no one sleeps on their back. That just seems like a recipe for snoring and just discomfort in general. Like, yeah, I can't wait for these poll results. I was going to say, I completely agree with you, but I'm curious to see what people think. Tweet us at Levitard Show. Is it insane to sleep on your stomach. Let us know. We've got plenty more topics like that. Listen, Roy Bellamy sent this list of topics today, these show notes. I mean, again, my ability to infiltrate the show is really unparalleled. But here's the things I'd like to talk about today, Dominique. Ichiro went full Bobby Valentine with a disguise. Johnny Depp spent more money on wine than you think. Baker Mayfield went at Colin Cowherd. Mike Trout's unbelievable. Woj synonyms. I mean, Canada legalizing marijuana. Mike Hoffman traded twice. Oh, Canada. I hope I hope you're into all these topics as much as I am because I uh, mean I was into all of them except for you like crowbar in that Canada in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean That's I let you on the show, verb. but this is an American show, sir. <laughs> That's an excellent verb, crowbarring. Put it on the poll. Is crowbarring the best verb you're gonna hear today on the show? Ryan! I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Ah! Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Sex by the fire at night. Silk sheets and diamonds all white. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. If you say you want a good time, well, here I am, baby. Here I am, baby. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. What's on your mind. If you want it, girl, come and get it. All this is here for you. Tell me, baby. Tell me. Tell me, baby. What you're trying to do. Gold jewelry shining so bright. Strawberry champagne on ice. Oh, go bleep yourself. Two gods. Honestly, it's offensive. I'm offended on behalf of, of, of everyone who's ever made music that that's the song of the year. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stu Gats on ESPN radio. Dominique Fox with bringing it. I'm Adnan Verk alongside Dominique. Somehow I've infiltrated the proceedings. Dominique was scheduled here and has graciously allowed me to be a part of the show today. Dan Lebatar's show on ESPN Radio, along with the entire shipping container. We had plenty of other topics to dissect, but clearly this takes precedence. Michael Porter Jr. fell in the draft due to back surgery 
Uh, we're positing that's one of the major reasons why people didn't get to see enough of him. Dominique pointing out, I myself have had some lower back pain, and I believe <laughs> that is because I sleep on my stomach. How unusual is this? Is it odd for a grown man to sleep on his stomach and to find it, quite frankly, incapable of switching positions? I've been trying to sleep on my back, trying to sleep on my side. Instead, we're living with the agony of lower back pain because the joy of sleeping on one's stomach is something I can't live without. I want to go around the shipping container. Mike Ryan, is it odd that I sleep on my stomach? It's not odd because my wife is almost exclusively a tummy sleeper, but um, I think uh, both you and Dominique are approaching this. It's sort of like we had the segment where do you sit or stand while wiping, oh. and people were shocked that there was an actual other side to this. Both sides thought there was only one way. Yes. Me, myself, I'm mostly a back sleeper. Back sleepers tend to snore. Um, I did have some snoring issues, but I'm also a light sleeper, so when I wake up for the first time at night, I then switch from back to side, but never, never <laughs> tummy. I like that you switch, rather than sleeping on my stomach, a tummy sleeper. Like, it just sounds a little more innocent and, quite si quite frankly, a little more soft. Roy, do you sleep on your stomach? No, I sleep on my side. Uh, I believe I toss and turn at night, but usually I end up waking up on my side. Okay, so we're 0 for can, 2 on tummy sleepers. Don't but, I mean, I can, I can respect the side sleeper. Back sleepers, no receipt. <laughs> Gear, uh, Billy, do you sleep on your stomach? No, I'm a side sleeper, but I also am a back sleeper at times. In fact, I had bad back problems, so I got a wedge pillow. Do you guys know what a wedge pillow is? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I have an idea, but please explain. It's essentially like a, uh, it's the shape of a doorstop, and it's like, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, I don't know. I want to say isosceles triangle, but I'm not sure that that's the type of triangle that it is. I appreciate the effort in case it is one, though, because yeah. that's pretty good stuff. And you're basically sleeping at an angle, and that's supposed to help you. So when I use the wedge pillow, I sleep on my back because it's hard to sleep on your side on that. But if not, I sleep on my side. But do you guys have, like, a preference to which side you sleep on? Oh, this is easy. I do. Oh, yeah. This is like there's a right answer here. You sleep on your right side. Left uh -uh. side is just not the way to go. Really? So I, I do sleep on my right side, but the right answer is away from the center of the bed. So I sleep on the left side of the bed. Mm. My wife sleeps on the right side. You get in bed, there's a little hug, cuddle, whatever. You hit the good night, <laughs> then you flip it. Why then you flip it, back to back. It's the way to go. You're so right about that. I do sleep away from my wife. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's so you only, that's because you sleep on the left side of the bed. That's the answer is the opposite or away from the middle. You must put your back towards the middle. I mean, you kind of got to watch out, I guess. See, each, it's like back to back in a, in an action movie. <laughs> That's an interesting. Uh, do, you, do you guys need to have something between your legs um, to fall uh, asleep? Like I always have to tuck the comforter in between my knees because I can't have my knees touching. That's so, the problem with side sleeping, by the way. Yeah, Mike, exactly. you gotta go. You gotta go two pillows. You gotta get two pillows. I got two pillows. You don't so. need to full body pillow. It's a thing <gasps> that they sell. And by the way, I've looked into like pregnancy pillows, which they sell. They kind of wrap. They basically <laughs> hug you. I haven't committed to one yet. But full body pillow is what it's all about. The pregnancy, got, my wife had a pregnancy pillow. They're like in the shape of a C. Mm -hmm. And you can like wrap your whole, they can wrap your whole body up. They, it great. looks pretty cool. I feel like, I feel like the Nuggets need to give us a call because I feel like we could solve all of Michael Porter's back issues if we just get him a pregnancy pillow and make sure he's sleeping on his tummy. He's not, not sleeping on his back. Gotta give him a tummy sleep and a pregnancy pillow. Uh, MVP of the league. Are you guys pillow flippers? Like throughout the night, are you flipping Ooh, your pillow over to get the question. cool side? That's a terrific question. I'm, I I'm am flip, one. I'm flipping my pillow at least like ten times a night. I used <laughs> to be one, and then I discovered that there's these pillows that have cooling gel in them. Oh, you need wow. to invest in one of these. I've had one for a couple years now. <laughs> Billy. I may go for a second one now because this one I've worn out a little bit. But you need to be careful because they're not all the same. Some are harder, some are softer. You need to really try out this pillow. Billy, if not, it, you're going to get neck pain. It sounds like you're spending half your paycheck on <laughs> sleeping goods. Sleeping, sleeping is a really important thing. Like, it, you know, a good night's sleep is very underrated. If you don't get a good eight hours of sleep, well, I never get eight hours. But if you don't get like a good six hours of sleep, oh, man, your day's ruined. I mean, it is time. you spend a lot of your time sleeping. I feel like uh, if you do the math, you probably spend more. A third of, of your any, life. Yeah, of any one activity that anyone's doing. So, I mean, that's, I understand it. But when I'm sleeping, I'm asleep. So once I, 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 I guess I have the cool side of the pillow when I lay down. But once I'm asleep, there's no like midnight. Maybe you get up and go to the bathroom, but there's not a pillow flip. You just go to sleep. Right? I'm with I'm with Dominique on that. I also think Dominique may face some backlash for uh, admitting that he likes to sleep 
in the opposite direction of his wife. But I, I Dominic, I'm with you. That is not uh, like a bad breath issue or anything like that. You, as you said, <laughs> you've, you've, you've closed the night on a positive note, whatever that may be, and now it's time just to part our separate ways. Yeah, I mean, there's really no need. I mean, I don't know. It's not a, it's not a love or a judgment thing. I don't know why you, um, crowbarred in there about breath. That seems like a personal <laughs> issue. Like breath never even came up. Like what is going on? Do you, you want to tell us something? A little halitosis? Got a, got a bit of it? No, I'm saying that somebody might think the reason you don't want to like cuddle with your wife all night in the same direction is maybe bad breath throughout the night. Like, you know, it'd be like a dragon breathing on her. Just, just, just let her sleep. No, it's a heady no, play, no. actually. No, no, no one was thinking that except for you. No one was thinking that except for you. And you know why you were thinking of it? Because you got bad breath. No, I don't. That's not you. Mike, get in here right now. Mike, you see, you can come in right now. How good is my breath? It was better before you had breakfast. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. It's just fruit, okay? Who doesn't love the smell of strawberries coming down on their face? Uh, Roy, one more for you. Do you sleep facing away from your wife? You didn't chime in on this specific topic. Uh, no, I sleep towards her, and then I flip just like Dominique does. Aw, Roy. <laughs> Such guys, a romantic. Do you guys sleep with your babies? No. 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 I sleep, like, with, my, I sleep with my baby Roma. Aww. Little baby doggy. Yeah. It's frowned upon, though. Like they, as soon as you have a baby, they tell you the doctors and the nurses tell you don't keep them in the bed because it's dangerous. That is yeah, correct. That- it is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. We're silent there, Mike. Don't kill your dog, man. Okay. Yeah, well, let us know what you think about as far as sleeping with loved ones as well. With the to sleep etiquette, tweet us at Lebertard Show. Um, hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, but today hiring can be easy. You only have to go to one place to get it done, ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the week's leading job boards, and it's so effective that 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. With results like that, it's no wonder that ZipRecruiter is the highest rated hiring site in America. And right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. That's ZipRecruiter.com, D-A-N. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Adnan Virk and Dominic Foxworth here on the Levitard Show. When we come back, Woj, as always, stealing the show at the NBA Draft, will explain when we come back. Don Levitard. Your face is gibberish, fat face. Stugatz. I don't respect Twitter. It's Twitter. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. That is Dominic Foxworth. I'm Adnan Verk. We are joining forces today here on the Dan Levitard Show. Minus Dan, minus Stugats. But the good news is the shipping container is always with us. And the hot topic of the day is the fact that I sleep on my stomach, how that has led to lower back pain. Zeke <laughs> Perez tweeting this. Uh, sleeping on your stomach is probably the worst sleeping position, especially if you have back problems. It flattens the natural curve of the spine, which can lead to lower back pain. Plus, sleeping all night with your head turned to one side will strain the neck. If you do prefer this position, try sticking a pillow under the hips and lower abdomen to give the bottom of the spine a lift. There you have it, Dominique. This guy's a doctor, clearly. I mean, he's soft is what he is. Like, if I'm concerned about sleeping, straining my neck, like, come on. I, I'm i concerned with comfort when I'm sleeping. If I'm worried about straightening my neck, I'll wear a neck brace. But I'm never going to sleep on my back. That's just please, not going to happen. Please do that in the future. Please tweet a picture of you wearing a neck brace, <laughs> about to go to sleep perhaps. Or if your wife can get a picture while you're fast asleep, we would like to have that <laughs> you on know social those, media. Those um those football cowboy collars that they used to wear back in the day? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to break out one of those. <laughs> sleep you, in a cowboy You guys collar. mentioned uh, waking up. Um, and I, I, I don't know if Dominique is, could take part in this because he has reason for his pain being a professional athlete and whatnot. But as you age, do you ever just wake up and say, well, I guess my, my elbow hurts now. I don't, I don't really know how it's hurting, but I guess I'm a guy who has a, a hurt elbow now. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Uh, I don't, Mike. Just the lower back issue, but that's because I sleep on my stomach. I don't have the other issues you're talking about. I think you got big time right there, Mike. He, like, dismissed you with that. He's like, eh, uh, Mike, nah. No? No, I just, I just, I was being honest. What do you want me to tell him? It's like, a part oh, of I have the whole time. No, yeah. no, Adnan, Adnan. The yeah. proper thing right there is to commiserate with a man and say, yeah, I feel the same way. I am, I, I, I too am getting old. That would be old. disingenuous. Mike doesn't Adnan, have time for let my life. Let me show you, let me show you how it's done. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Mike, Try so, it again, Mike. Go ahead. You guys ever wake up and you have this mysterious pain and you're, I guess you're older now and you're like, oh man, how does my elbow hurt now? I guess I'm an elbow hurting guy now. Yeah, Mike, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have some, some kind of consistent pain in my hip and my, in my knee from football, but 
a couple of days ago, I just woke up and my trap hurt. And I just was like, why is my trapezius muscle hurting? Like, I haven't done any lifting. I haven't done any sort of activity that would suggest that it hurt. But I just woke up. But it comes with aging, man. We got to be strong. We'll go through this together. I love you. Uh, yeah. while, a, while a more polite tact, perhaps Adnan was actually right the first time. <laughs> no, no, no. You guys are doing this wrong. You guys, like, you, you know what Stugatz does, right? You just lie and you one-up him. So, like, if Mike's like, sometimes my elbow hurts, you go, buddy, that happens to me all the time. My elbow doesn't even bend some days. Some days <laughs> my two elbows don't bend, my knees don't bend, and I'm walking like, you know, I have two chopsticks. I can't, I, sometimes I can't even walk. Sometimes I don't get out of bed. Sometimes I can't even come to work. You see me, but I'm not here because I'm in so much pain. <laughs> Do, does does Billy do the best two gots impression of anybody on the show? Yes or no? Uh, absolutely. It's not even close. Yeah, that's not, I mean, Billy is two gods. It's, I, I was thinking when you first brought us back in, like, which one of us is Dan and which one of us is Stu, but now I think us together make one Dan. Uh, and insert joke here. And Billy <laughs> is the, is the Stu, right? <laughs> insert joke here was very good. Uh, monitoring our social media, Billy, what are people saying about sleeping on one stomach? Is it as prevalent as I'm hoping or am I clearly an outlier? I have definitely picked up on the fact that everyone that sleeps on their stomach has back issues. And they say that it's worth it, which it doesn't seem like it's worth it. Like, if you know you're going to do this and it's going to hurt you, why would you keep doing it? Well, because the op- the other option is to not actually get good sleep. So I don't have back issues. I sleep on my stomach because I'm tougher than you and I, everyone who's listening. I feel like sleeping on your stomach would make me drool more. Do You drool a lot, Adnan. Uh- um, you know what, Chris, if I'm really tired, it happens. I wouldn't say a lot, but it has happened on occasion. <laughs> hey, how about this? Is the mattress overrated? Is it worth it? The person saying, no, go get a $3,000 mattress and you can still sleep on your stomach. Is that true? Is that a fallacy? Mike Ryan, do you agree? If can I sleep on my stomach, but I just get a really expensive mattress. I mean, we have mattress sponsors. Maybe we can help them out. <laughs> oh, are we giving away mattresses now? I mean, in our show's history. Look, man, I, I, why? it's 2018. Sleep how you want to, brother. Uh, I'm not judging you. <laughs> I was really caught off guard by Dominique being so off-putting yeah. by telling me that I can't exist as a back sleeper. Dude, I don't tell you how to sleep. No, nah, there's only one way to sleep. Make sleep great again. It's the only way to do it. Don Lebatard. All right, hold on a second. We've got one minute left in the segment. Can we have everyone, including Roy? Roy, do you do a fake Stugat? Yeah, buddy, I actually do. All right, let's all of us at the <laughs> same time. It's going to be being John Malcolm <laughs> for one minute. Go. Stugats. Hey, buddy. Let's see, man. 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 let us see man 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 let us We've infiltrated the Dan oh, Lovatar oh, show. Oh, oh. Go ahead, please. I mean, shouldn't you, though? Like, seriously, you're not a, a baby. Get it together. <laughs> like, if you wake up in the morning and you get up and you look in the mirror and the whole right or left side of your face is drenched with your own <laughs> saliva, like, look in the mirror and decide that you're not going to be that man. Show some discipline. Control you, yourself. You, you gave an expletive-laden tirade towards because, Mike, you see, in the commercial break about this I issue. Mean, it's disgusting. You're a grown man. Keep your spit in your mouth. You can't just like, there is no, there are very few, oh, oh, there are very few excuses that I will accept for why your bed may be wet. And that is certainly not one of them. It seems okay. like the older I get, the worse it gets, though. Well, then get some. Uh, whew, listen, Mikey. a man, a man, listen, you're unfarely categorizing him now as a bedwetter. All of a sudden you have him urinating I mean, in his underwear. It's unfairly. It's not that. He's drooling on his pillow unfairly categorizing him when he lays down the bed is what dry when he wakes up the bed is wet the man's a bedwetter that's like that's like getting mad at someone for the dream that they have like well, i have no control over if i drool or not that's I'm sorry excellent Dominique. point chris excellent you d- point this you do have control you could sometimes you just the great ones they look at themselves and they say not today drool not today well, clearly Dominic has proven himself a master of the English language, and another man who excels in that category is Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj was the best reason to watch the NBA draft last night, and no, I did not watch it. I was watching Morvin Neville's heartbreaking documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? The Life and Times of Mr. Rogers, uh, review coming soon to Cinephile. I feel, on like, the East he, I feel like this should be a fine for Adnan. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
Absolutely. <laughs> Any further mentions of Mr. Rogers? Yeah. Anytime, I get fined for being a music snob. Anytime you are a movie snob, yeah. we hit you with a fine. Now, hang Absolutely. on a second, Mike. Mike, you can't be finding someone for giving away their nature. I mean, I cannot. Right? This is who I am. Yeah, I that's, mean that's essentially what this fine system is. That's do you, all we do to find people. <laughs> do you? Can we hit them with it? You don't get the show. Like, <laughs> You're getting fined for being. Uh, you don't get the show. Yeah, Fair that's, enough. Listen. that's sort of the whole premise. Uh, listen, I've 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 been in your shoes. Initially defensive. Wait a second. What am I doing? That's snobby. Right. Anytime you talk about uh, movies, just like anytime I say anything about music. Look, I'll right. do it right now. Sure. Keith Richards. That's one dollar. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, fair enough. I, I owe you guys a buck. We'll figure this out. Woj last night. Howlin' first... Wolf. That's a fine. <laughs> That's a, yeah, that a Speaking That's of music takes. Okay, well, hang on. Now we need to do up to this music take. Uh, Mike, your reaction to Stu Gott saying the Beatles are horrendously overrated. Uh, I don't think that they're over properly rated. How about properly that? rated? Properly yes. rated. Yeah. Properly rated. Old school. Um, I love it. I'm not. I'm more of a Rolling Stones guy than a Beatles guy. Wow. Though. Yeah. I think Beatles. Properly rated and I mean, Mike, Rolling Stones underrated. There's a I, uh, there's been a rush the last few weeks of contemporary music, hip hop, and specific being specific. What of those albums are must listens to? Because I feel like the last four weeks we've gotten a lot. Oh, you mean of the uh, well, the Kanye? Se- wait, no, I mean, wait. Got- I know what you're doing. Fine. No, uh, no, he's going. You can't bait. You cannot bait me into a fine. A I'm trap. sorry. I'm just. How saying, was it? Kids see Ghost is probably the best of the Kanye uh, projects. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the the um. I feel like the Kanye, both of the Kanye projects, the ones that he is actually rapping on, are a bit overrated, kind of like the original Godfather. Really? So you didn't like oh, Kids He Goes? Reborn. I, I like the whole idea of uh, Adnan teasing the Woj thing without ever getting into it, because it's been an hour of him trying to get it off the ground. And I don't know if you caught like his latest transition. He just transition. slammed the Godfather. Now, how can I get to the Woj? He just slammed the Godfather. Dominic tried to s- slip that in there very discreetly. Oh, okay. Woj first round verbs ranked... Number one, this is according to SB Nation. I'm with you, though. The Godfather is a tad overrated. Oh, I mean, my goodness. Now, listen, and I'm going to get fined if I defend the Godfather. No, I'm I mean, so cheap. I don't want to get fined. I'm just going to let you guys go ahead and say this. Some things, are, terrible. some things are worth paying for. Like I, I wouldn't stand <laughs> for for certain things. I would have to pay those fines. Let's see Let's see what type of integrity you have. What type of sin of phylactic <laughs> te- te- integrity you actually have. <laughs> For a master of the English language, there's no such word as cinephilactic. Cinephilic would will well do fine. Woj uh, first it, it is now. Oh, I kind of oh, yeah. oh, snub. That's that counts as movie snobbery. That, no, that doesn't count that as fine. It's the definition of movie snobbery. Him. No, that what is was the, the word that you were correcting him on? Cinephilic. Why? Oh, cine. Oh, S- movie, movie snob. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at a five dollars segment right now, Adnan. All right, I'm not going to get caught with the Greg Cody hard network out. Woj first round verbs ranked. Here we go. SB Nation. Number one, a laser. Number two, whoa, unlikely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Adnan, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you want to get into this, but there's several people in our listening audience that don't have Woj on mobile alerts and weren't following the NBA draft that have no idea what you're talking about. You're coming in guns hot, baby. All right, listen, these, these spoiler free loophole tweets, and he's using these words last night in reference to the picks. Do you want more preamble, or is that good enough, Mike? No, I think uh, you need to give a little uh, bit more background. For such a fan of cinema, you're, you, yeah, I mean, geez. there's I mean, this first act, you, this is a terrible first act. character development in this segment is so bad. <laughs> okay, can you please give us the first act so I can do the second act, okay, Mike? No, no, first, no, we're coaching you up. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm just a producer. I'm not an on-air guy, okay? Please. But I would I would say, you know, for the listening audience, you tell them about um, how the NBA and ESPN initially agreed to not tip any of the draft picks, and then yeah. Turner followed suit and then yahoo followed suit and there was seemingly an agreement for a spoiler free nba draft experience where you would be watching the television program and learning the draft picks as they happen as opposed to previous years where they'd be spoiled by adrian wojnarowski or other reporters out there okay that's an excellent setup thank you that is actually quite important background so but then, having said that, Mark Stein started doing stuff, <laughs> yeah, and well Mark done. Stein is not a part of Turner, and he's not a part of Yahoo, and he's what not he a part, part of? of ESPN. He's part of the New York Times. Right. They Boom. were not part of the ceasefire agreement. Nope. So he started tipping picks. Yeah. So then Woj, game on. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Can't wait for the third act. Has a laser on is one expression he used. Are fixated on was another one. Is kind of tantalized like there needs by to be another yeah, act yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're just, in a hurry. 
Yeah, in a hurry. So it's like a hard to network to, out here. I'm not going to get screwed on this. All right, build up have to this <laughs> while setting up our next guest. I mean, Sheesh. really falling on your face here. <laughs> have no plans to pass on. Are unlikely to resist. Has cleared the way. Oh, this is no a one mess. Knows. Are this enamored is with. Is determined to select. Is locked on. Who directed this segment? Joel Schumacher. <laughs> is focused on. Has been focused on. Anybody still with me? This is Batman. I'm forever. focused on Tim Kirch, and he's coming up next on the Dan Levitar Show. Stu Gotts here is your home and ADT home. If not, then listen up. You need to get to ADT to help protect against break-ins, fire, even carbon monoxide. And now for a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month for the most trusted name in home security. That's just a dollar a day. You spend way more than a buck on your morning coffee. ADT is the first security company to help you keep safe at home and when you're on the go with the new ADT Go app. ADT Go has some great features like a family locator, private messaging, automatic check-ins, and safe driving reports. It even includes an SOS button with 24-7 emergency response. And if you need more of a reason to buy, you get ADT Go with a purchase of any security system. Seriously, guys, it's a great deal. Protect yourself and your family. Do it right now. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. ADT, tested, trusted, proven, with 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply, excludes taxes and fees, applies to traditional services only, certain markets excluded, license available at ADT.com. It is time to talk baseball with Tim Kirshen. Shimmy, shimmy, ya, yeah. Shimmy, yam, shimmy, ya. Yeah. I'm a dirty old dog all day. No way, Jose. Your girl only go one way. Ah, ye madre. Every week during the baseball season, ESPN's premier baseball insider joins Dan and his two guts to drop some hardball knowledge and take your calls. Two plus two, I'm going to undress you. Three and three, you're going to undress me. Four and four, we're going to freak some more. Here is Dan Levitard, his two guts, and Tim Kirchen on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycle, RVs, and more at Progressive.com. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pinzoil Performance Line. And now, your Sports Center update. Let's start with the World Cup. Yesterday, Argentina suffered its worst World Cup loss in 60 years, going down 3-0 to Croatia. And in the blink and in a on, on the brink of elimination, Lionel Still Messi. Here, what's going on? <laughs> Lionel Messi, the who has wins. never won a major title with the senior national team, failed to record a shot and has had the disappointing tournament overall. Argentina faces Nigeria in their final group match on Tuesday. This World Cup date is brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Think ahead, think advance. Ramona Shelburne reports that the Lakers and Spurs are negotiating a trade involving Kawhi Leonard with little to no progress. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Thanks for the music carried that, even as Dominic was stumbling and bumbling. The baseball music was putting me into moments of rapturous joy. Dominic Foxworth, Adnan Burke, we are combining forces here for the Dan Lebitard Show with Stu Gatz. It is a real pleasure, a real thrill to always bring in my good, good friend, Tim Curtin, the program. Tim, somehow I've infiltrated this show. You know, right now, Dan is appalled. He is furious. He is shaking his fist <laughs> in the sky that I'm doing this show, and he's not here. <laughs> well, I think it's great that you're on the show, and I think it's great that Dan is appalled. And I still think the greatest lookalike ever is you. Welcome to Changier. It's still the best one of all the great ones we've heard. As you know, I've made it a home run call. I need to get a vanity license plate that says Tangier. People believe I'm doing this show live from Tangier today. Before we reflect on what's happening in baseball, I'd like to take a look back, and it's almost been a year since the greatest moment of your career occurred, and that was when we were at the All-Star Game in Miami. And after finishing our Baseball Tonight program, I looked over and spotted Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305, Pitbull. I raced over to him. I told him, you've got to meet a huge fan and then that fan was you. Can you please pick up the story from there? Well, he came over, and he gave me a handshake. It was this complicated handshake. I could barely figure out what to do next. And he said, I understand you're my biggest fan. <laughs> and I didn't even know who he was. I mean, you told me he was Pitbull, but I wouldn't know one thing that he did. So we had a nice back and forth. Fortunately, he didn't ask me, like, what's 
what's your favorite song that I do? Because I don't know any of them. And then we, uh, we took a picture. And as always, I think, well, this is the end of this. That's it. As it turns out, stupid Twitter just blows up at this preposterous picture of Mr. 305, the coolest guy in South Florida, standing next to me, the least cool guy on the face of the earth. It was so dumb. It was so bad. It was all your fault, that man. Who was the most notable baseball personality who texted you and asked why you were there with Pitbull? I want to know, did Cal Ripken all of a sudden text you and wonder what was happening? No, but a half a dozen all-stars, including Mike Trout, said something like, Hey, I saw you with Pitbull yesterday. (laughs) Really? We're at the all-star game? And that's what we're talking about, me with Pitbull. Oh, Oh, my gosh. I love it. Speaking of Mike Trout, completed his 1,000th career game on Thursday, Timmy. They beat the Jays 8-5. He's got more home runs, walks, and war through his first 1,000 career games than the all-time leader in those categories, Barry Bonds. Could you make the argument he's already a Hall of Famer, even though he has yet to play the requisite 10 seasons, at the age of 26? Uh, well, obviously the rules say you have to play 10 so technically he's not, but yes, you could certainly make that case already. As you know, and, and Trout is the only player ever to finish in the top two of the MVP voting in each of his first two full seasons, and he did it for his first five full seasons. And the scary part, of course, is he's getting better. And I know I've told you this story, Adnan, but... It's true. He's so competitive. He was in spring training a few years ago. Raul Abanez told us this story. He's taking BP, and he goes and tells, says everyone in the group around him, I'm going to hit a home run into that trash can uh, in, in the next few pitches. It's like a green trash can. It's not a dumpster. It's a trash can. And about 10 pitches later, he had a home run into the trash can. And Abanez told me he did it several more times in BP that spring. And I went to Trout, and he very, very sheepishly and very humbly acknowledged when I said, that's impossible, you didn't do that. He goes, yes, I did that. That's who he is, wildly competitive, unbelievably talented, and on his way to being, of course, one of the greatest players of all time. Hey, Tom, is that the most um, amazing feat of skill that you've heard of or seen of or seen in your um, coverage of baseball? Um. That I didn't see it, but that's pretty darn good. But Greg Maddox, who was an absolute magician with everything that he did, I, Kevin Towers, late Kevin Towers, told me the story that when Maddox was going through his final tour on the new, the ballparks that he played in, knowing this is my final year, he would do something funny or crazy at each ballpark just to commemorate it. This is my last time here. And Kevin Towers told me that Maddox, I know this sounds apocryphal, bounced a curveball off a metal chair in the bullpen on purpose, and the ball bounced off the chair and went over home plate for a strike. Now, with Greg Maddox, I believe that because he can do anything. And speaking of that, Jose Okendo, who is one of the coaches for the Cardinals, I have seen him throw batting practice with his fungo bat. He throws the ball up in the air, and he hits it across the plate for a strike. Not once, not twice, five, ten times in a row. And he promised me I would never hit a batter hitting batting practice to him with my fungo. That's pretty hard to do. Talking right now with Tim Kirch on the Dan Levitar Show, Adnan Burke and Dominic Foxworth in the house. Uh, Timmy, our old buddy Aaron Boone hooked me up with the Yankees tickets the last uh, two nights ago. Excuse me, I uh, cool was out when I take my kids, my family there. We're watching the game, and my eldest son turns to me and he thinks Gary Sanchez is unbelievable. But now he's following statistics. He's ten years old, and he goes, "Wow, he's got under a three hundred on base percentage." And I said, "Yeah, he's dreadful." And the question he posed me, which I posed to you, as great as the Yankees are, how stunning is it they're doing it with Gary Sanchez having a terrible season? Right. It's pretty amazing, Adnan, that they're on a pace to break the all-time home run record. And even though Giancarlo Stanton's got a ton of homers, like fifth in the league, to be there without Stanton at his very best and with Sanchez still under 200 is remarkable. And it just shows you when you add Glaber Torres at third and at second and you add Miguel Andujar at third and now you don't have an out in the lineup and you got Greg Bird back, when Gary Sanchez gets hot and he will get smoking hot at some point 
uh, this team's going to take off even more, if that's possible, than they have to this point. Hey, Tim, you're a Maryland guy just like me. Go Terps. Can you give me something to be excited about for my Baltimore Orioles? Uh, <laughs> no, is that, I, I is that too hard? I, <laughs> is that too difficult? <laughs> well, they're, they're 30 games under, Dominique. It's not even until July yet. I mean, like the future of the Orioles, something? Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to reset the organization. They're going to reset the direction of the team when they trade Manny Machado and Adam Jones and Brad Brock and maybe Zach Britton, maybe all of them, free agents. And they're going to retool this team and get it going in the right direction. And then Buck Showalter, who's still a great manager, will teach those young players how to play the game and eventually they will come back and be a viable franchise again. But that's going to take several years from now. So the answer is no. You can't give me anything positive. Okay, thanks, Adnan. <laughs> Sorry. Before we let you go, Tim, tell me and our audience how you are the George Banks of ESPN. For those who are unaware of George Banks is, that would be the Steve Martin character in the movie Father of the Bride. That's a fine! <laughs> yep, $2. Come on. Yeah. come on, I was explaining it. Go ahead, Tim. All right, Monday, uh, my wife and my future son-in-law and my daughter, they're going to get married next summer, went to look for wedding venues. And I think that's when I really officially became George Banks. We had, you know, a wedding planner was with us. Her name is not Honk, thank goodness, or Frank. That's good. But we jokingly said, <laughs> somebody, I think my daughter said, hey, the church is free, to which I, of course, filled in the line. Finally, something that's free, to which Nita Bank said, it's not free, it's available. That's where we are already in the Kelly Kirchin wedding plans. We've seen the venues. We're going to pick one and a date pretty soon. And before you know it, I'm going to get arrested for uh, stealing hot dog buns from the grocery store. <laughs> Celebrity softball is just a few weeks away. It's going to be in D.C. It's your stomping grounds. What are the odds we can get Tim Kirkson to play in Celebrity Softball this year? Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't been asked, and there's a good chance uh, that's not going to happen because I'm the furthest thing from a celebrity. I know one of our people wanted me somehow involved so I could stand next to Shaquille O'Neal, who's apparently playing in the game for <laughs> some sort of scale and context Uh I guess if they want me to do that, I would. Uh, that's, that's really all I'm good for these days. So I, I don't think I'll be playing. I don't think I should be playing. So we'll let some uh, real celebrities play. You know that's not true. You're a giant among men in my heart, Tim. Thanks as always. I'll see you soon. Okay, Nancy. See you, Dominique. I'm washing my nose. Oh, yeah. I'm a shower curtain, and I do one thing. Keep water from leaking everywhere. So you see why I feel useless compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could Geico save you money, but they've been around for over 75 years. And they give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or on the Geico app. And they've got a 97% customer satisfaction rating. They do all this while I have to listen to this chucklehead. Oh, good, he stopped. Washing my toes! Oh, great, an encore. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Libertard. I would like to help out the board op on Golic and Wingo. Cliff, I am your voice. I was you once. I am you. Golic and Wingo laughed at Cliff the board op. And Cliff, I'm telling you, they all laughed at me at one point. They're still laughing. Can at we me, talk Cliff. to Cliff right now? I want to ask him who in sports looks like they might have dandruff. Can we talk to Cliff right now since you've decided to use this first segment to send shout outs to Cliff the board op? Stugats. Guys, it appears that we have Cliff the board op. Oh, yeah. All right. Cliff the board op. The question is posed to you. Mike, get our top of the line entertainment production ready. Who in sports most looks like they probably have dandruff? Is that to me? Thank you, Cliff. Your big shining moment. You are indeed the Stugats of the board op world. Hey, goodbye, everybody. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. That's Dominic Foxworth. I'm Adnan Vork joining forces today for the Dan Lebatar Show. Thankfully, the shipping container is here with us as well. We will momentarily get into the situation involving Jameis Winston and a three-game suspension he's facing for his behavior 
Also, thanks to Tim Kirchner, who just joined us. The great Max Bradas is going to join us at noon, about 40 minutes from now, to talk World Cup and give us some of his world-class impressions. Before we get into Jameis, Billy, earlier in a conversation in which we were discussing sleep cycles and ways we sleep, mentioned a pillow, which he believed is an isosceles-shaped triangle. Billy, can you please, for our audience, because I'm getting a lot of questions here about geometry, can you define an isosceles triangle as I put you on the spot? I did, actually. I looked it up because I knew that was wrong. So an isosceles, I believe, has two equal sides. So this is not an isosceles triangle. It's more of like a right angle or like an acute angled pillow, I'd say. (laughs) Very good. Can you offer a definition of an acute angle? An acute angle, I believe, is a triangle which every angle is less than 90. Oh, that is terrific. And one more for you, scalene triangle. Oh, man. I could give you obtuse. Obtuse (laughs) is one with over 90, right? I'm willing willing to take obtuse as well. Is scalene the one that's... uh, No. Equilateral is the one that has three equal sides, right? What's what's scalene? Scalene has no congruent sides. In other words, each side must have a different length. Mm. Geometry with the Dan Levitard show <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a fun Friday. <laughs> a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah, I, I, do love, I do love that Billy tried the right and vote with the obtuse triangle. That was still an excellent <laughs> attempt. Very good stuff. What a surprise. More stuff involving Jameis Winston. Dominique, you look at his past. I can give a, a litany of them, but I will give a few here just to remind people. September 2014, suspended for an entire game after a profane, sexually explicit outburst in the student union back when he was at Florida State. December 2014, found not responsible, violating student conduct code in relation to December 2012, alleged sexual assault of female student. December 2016, fined over $9,000 for unsportsmanlike conduct. Also spoke about gender roles in February of 2017 and talked about all my young boys stand up. The ladies sit down. All my boys stand up. We strong right. We strong right, et cetera. A couple other notable finds, and we all know what happened in college as well. Now, this latest incident, November 2017, the NFL started an investigation over an allegation that Jameis Winston groped a female Uber driver in March of 2016. NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy confirmed to ESPN's Jeff Darlington the allegation was shared with the NFL. We've reached out to Uber to request any information that may have. And now the story is the NFL is planning to suspend Jameis the first three games of the season for violating the league's personal conduct policy. We'll get into the fact the Buccaneers have the hardest schedule in the NFL over the first three games of the season, facing the Saints, Eagles, and Steelers momentarily. But what can you tell us about the specifics of the suspension and how it was investigated? Well, yeah, the suspension, uh, I don't believe it's official yet, but people are speculating and it seems like it's something that's going to happen. And along with that speculation, uh, it comes that he's not necessarily being um, penalized for his behavior in the Uber, whether it took place or not. He is going to be penalized, at least from what I've been reading, for not disclosing that there was uh, an, a complaint made about him. So I think that's a interesting way to go about it. Jameis Winston is obviously not the best person to be looking for an appeal considering his tra- track record, but... Uh, it's frustrating. I imagine it's frustrating for the NFL that it seems like these type of stories are always in the news. And I suspect that they have encouraged Jameis and, and given Jameis's track record, no one really wants this to be appealed. No one really wants this to drag out. No one wants this in, uh, given his contract situation also, he would hate for this to drag out into next season when, um, his salary jumps a great deal and that suspension would be much more costly. But all this stuff, um, circling around the league is something that, just doesn't seem to go away, which is, I mean, obviously disappointing for from the league standpoint, but it's disappointing as a former player and uh, someone who preaches of the player's virtue going forward. So I, I don't quite know what to make of this situation. One another, another interesting note from this is Ronald Darby, a cornerback from the Eagles who uh, played with Winston and um, and Tallahassee. He apparently was in the vehicle with Jameis, and they both claim that there was a third person uh, who was in the car, and it, they seem to be insinuating that the third person may the, be the one who was um, involved in this, but no one has disclosed who that third person is. I'm with you on it's disappointing, and unfortunately, in the case of Jameis Winston, not entirely unsurprising. But I am surprised by what you said in that the NFL isn't necessarily saying he was guilty of such action. Three game suspensions merited because of the non disclosure of it. If that's the case, doesn't that seem a little harsh? If you didn't tell someone about a complaint, you lose three games of an NFL season. I mean, it does seem incredibly harsh, but it seems like, um, as the NFL has learned to do, because when they do get these appeals, they found different ways to, to, um, 
or found different rules to penalize the guys under. So it's probably pretty difficult to win an appeal if you're penalizing someone for something that you can't necessarily um prove definitively, but they can definitively prove definitively prove that he did not uh report these allegations. So whether they are penalizing him for that or something else, I think the way that the public will interpret this, which is what matters to the NFL, is that the NFL is tough on on these type of uh sexist allegations, which I think is while these reports aren't great for the league, I think it's probably good for the league PR wise to to be perceived as uh as tough and no nonsense on these type of things. Mike Ryan, if you hear Jameis Winston may have groped a driver, may not have, didn't disclose it, therefore three game suspension, does that seem harsh to you or does that seem in line with, as Dominic's saying, his past behaviors and the way the league is trying to meet out and get rid of this behavior? I mean, I'm uncomfortable with how arbitrary all of this seems. And to me personally, it just feels right if he didn't disclose it. I guess that's what probably uh, I mean, the accusations, I know the the investigation and whatnot, but not disclosing it considering his prior history, even though he wasn't a professional back then, in my mind, I can't really rule any of that stuff out. Um, and I'm not even sure that the NFL is either. Um, and that probably goes against an independent investigation, but that has to be at play here, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think, Dominic, you're right about the fact that, like you said, nobody wants to see him appeal. Who who in the world is on the side of Jameis Winston here, aside from Jameis Winston and his backers? Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, is because I would want to see him appeal. Not necessarily because of Jameis Winston, but because of the other players. And uh, it's a terrible position to, to be put in where... You are uh, trying to defend the accused, but I think what you are trying to defend and the players should try to defend is the process. You don't necessarily want to get in a situation, which it unfortunately feels like we're in that situation where when someone is accused of something, that's all you need to to take them out of the game. And it's tough that all of this stuff, obviously, it is connected to um the general tenor of the country but I, I think there is something to be concerned about about players rights going forward if if we get in a situation where uh, uh people there is no expectation for appeal when there's something that happens that deserves an appeal if you feel like you're guilty and the public will turn against you for trying to defend yourself that sucks and and Jameis Winston the problem is it always falls on someone who is uh not a very good martyr like Jameis Winston Zeke Elliott like these guys are people with backgrounds that doesn't really make them um sympathetic Put us your thoughts. I'm curious what the audience out there thinks. At Foxworth24, Adnan ESPN, and at Levitard Show, three-game suspension for Jameis Winston for doing something which he may not have done but didn't disclose it. Does that seem fair to you? Curious to get your thoughts on that. Please let us know. Coming up next, though. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you're right. Just a second. Yeah, give me a second, man. Slow down. Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Just, just the voice of Morgan Freeman had to chime in <laughs> expertly. Well done. That's close Coming to up fine. next, uh, speaking of <laughs> maybe a fine, yeah, fine them, fine. How about how, what are we at in fines right now, Chris? Can you total this up? Are we at seven dollars? Even though I thought the father of the bride was fine, but I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, it was nah. a fine. That's a definite fine. <laughs> I mean, it was a baseball segment, and again, you crowbarred it in. It was like it was though it had no relevance. You could have yeah. just asked him about um, his. How's your wedding plans? Yeah, yeah, that's simple. But no, you made it a movie reference. Yeah, we're at nine dollars now. <laughs> okay, thanks. Keep me updated. Coming up next, speaking of quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield taking umbrage with Colin Cowherd and his assertion about his behavior on the field. But it's not what you think. That's coming up next. Adnan Burke and Dominic Foxworth. Don Libertard. I wanted to do the show that we do on Wednesdays, which is wacky and pop culture. And we'll talk about Russell Crowe's got like, evidently a book of divorce, like the art of divorce. There's an actual book out that he's got that I want to just read from. Stugatz. Oh, the uh, the art of divorce was, I think, just the auction, not an actual book. You thought the guy wrote the book on divorce? I mean, no, like, no, what, he's teaching the proper way. Here's the proper way. I thought, Russell, way, I thought, Ru- I I thought mean. Russell Crowe was. <laughs> Thank you. That's Stugatz. the book. Okay, Here's the book on go. divorce. All right. <laughs> Sign there, a prenup. There it is. That's, that's a, there it is. Uh, and by the way, it's a fine. I mean, you mistook a book for whatever it was. An I mean, auction. A <laughs> Sunday's yeah, auction. Yeah, yeah. That's not a book. $5. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. That is Dominique Foxworth. I'm Adnan Vork. Joining forces today on the Dan Lebatar Show with Stugats. Neither Dan Neither Stu. Great music on the rejoin. I love that song by Weezer. Well done there by the crew. The entire shipping container is here with us. 
There's nothing sports media loves than diving into other sports media. And so I attacked with relish once I saw Baker Mayfield goes at Colin Cowherd. For those that missed it, I found it very entertaining. Perhaps I think when you work in the media, like I said, we enjoy this even more because I know that moment when it becomes cringeworthy. I know when I've asked a guest something that he or she doesn't appreciate, and I have to very quickly try to get the water out of the boat. For the record, I like Colin when he was here. He was always nice to me. Uh, he had a theory that a lot of smart people come from cold weather places. That was the longest conversation we ever had. Because I'm Canadian, he kept telling me, oh, and I can tell you're smart because you're Canadian. If people are from cold places, are very smart. Well, I, I don't know ex- exactly if I follow oh, his logic. Because Stanford is where warm weather is, if I'm not mistaken. But regardless... Yeah, Take I mean, there, there's so many, so, so many trouble areas with that that we are going to avoid. Yes. Yeah, I call but, them. <laughs> but Baker Mayfield was talking, was a guest with Colin. FS1 The Herd with Colin Cowherd. Take a listen to this exchange they had on the program yesterday. Now watch this, Baker, and you throw a touchdown, and instead of, now I don't like this, I'm going to tell you right now, where are you going? Our band is over there, our student section's right there, and then straight back to our sideline. What about your team? Did you watch the rest of the game? I watched the whole game. You did? So you saw me celebrate with my teammates like the three touchdowns before that, too? I don't like that. Oh, know. okay. Yeah. You pulled the one clip of me running right there to our fans and people that traveled well to that game, first of all. And then you didn't show the rest of the clip of me going to our sideline. No, no, no. You go. Well, you no, have to go to the sideline. You you're not going to go to you a didn't. hospital. Well, where are you going to go after the touchdown? You're not going to go. Well, you're uh, acting like I just ran away from everybody. <laughs> well, you did, but then you came back and circled to the sideline. This is a what is this, a five second clip of you showing me, and then I'm off the screen right there. I'd like you to be with your teammates. Uh, watch the rest of the game. I was. So you think my accusation that this doesn't, this isn't fact, great. I feel like you're going for the fact that I'm not a team guy. I'm selfish. Is that what you're shooting at right here or what? Um, it is a, no, I don't think that. I think you, I think sometimes your judgment's just a tad off. And I think the NFL's a judgment league because the, the game is so fast. Mm-hmm. You have to make, the windows get really, really tight and really, really small. You gotta make decisions really, really fast. In college, you got that Orlando Brown guy, got a little yeah. more time. I don't love that decision. I don't love it. The celebration? Do you I, see what people do in the league now? Celebration wise? Hip thrusting, not a fan. Man, Baker Mayfield for MVP. Like, that was fantastic, <laughs> right? Like, who does, I mean, with the exception of maybe Colin and I guess his wife, no one else on earth did not enjoy that, right? Everyone appreciates that. <laughs> hip thrusting, not a fan. <laughs> How could you not be a fan of hip thrusting? Like, that's just, you are anti-happiness. Like, I, I mean, Colin has children, so he has to be a fan of hip thrusting at, at, on some level, right? Hip thrusting, not a fan. <laughs> what? Where for those you... that were curious where he laid on this issue of our time, one more time, play it for me. Hip thrusting, not a fan. All right, thank you very much. We have that cleared up now. Oh, how great was that, you guys? He was so rattled. Baker Mayfield rattled Colin Cowherd, who's one of the more polished professionals in this industry. Colin just started rambling about tight windows and whatnot. <laughs> he had him on his heels. My quarterback! <laughs> Mike, what it was if- even better in person because you're right. You could start seeing the gesticulation and the body language and Collins now talking faster, clearly feels the pressure as the walls are closing in. They did close with a giggle and a chuckle. But what do you think the conversation was like at the end of the interview when Baker Mayfield left? Do you think it was positive and glowing? Do you think there was some acrimony? What was that like? I'm pretty sure Baker Mayfield grabbed his crotch the way that yeah. he did to the Kansas <laughs> yeah. sideline on his yeah. way out of the Fox studio. <laughs> <laughs> but just, I mean, there are no words. You just got to give him one solid hip thrust, walk out the door. Dominique, if you're in that situation, you're calling and you realize you have erred or at least upset the guest, would you have died on that hill or would you have conceded that perhaps Baker Mayfield not running to his teammates is OK? Because once he gave you the explanation that he was running towards the student section, that would placate you. Would you be willing to keep pushing the way Colin did? No, nah, I mean, Colin, I think he handled it well. Like, I, I agree that he was a little rattled and he lost that exchange, but I mean, he, he saved his dignity. I'm not sure that I would have, I might have backed off the point altogether and be like, nah, you're right, Baker. I'm sorry. I, I apologize because once you just get made to look like wrong and just completely wrong headed and he pull, points out the fact that you're just cherry picking five second clips and just try and then you do all this kind of dog whistle nonsense about how you're running away from the guys and that means you aren't a team player. Baker put him on the spot. It's like, so what you're saying 
is I'm not a team guy. And Colin was like, no, 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 no. I just decision making. <laughs> like it was <laughs> tight windows, tight windows, <laughs> tight windows, right. tight windows. It was, it was rough, but I certainly do appreciate that Colin kind of leaned into it in a way that I don't think I would have had the guts to do. Billy, do you have more respect for Colin Coward? He was willing to die on the hill that Baker Mayfield is not a good teammate because he did not celebrate with his teammates instantly. Oh, it was great for Colin. Colin loves what happened. I think Colin would have agitated him even more. We played his clip today on ESPN Radio. This was great for Colin. I think you're right about that. Remember when Colin went at Harbaugh? For some reason, and then it wasn't on Colin. Harbaugh was just bizarre. He was just so unengaged and dismissive. They mentioned Colin just said goodbye to him. You're right. That's like red meat to people in our industry, right, Mike Ryan? This is like great. This is trending everywhere. All right. I got punked. I love it. Yeah, I think Colin likes uh, the result, but I think part of him is like, man, I wish uh, the clip circulating on ESPN right now isn't me just not getting totally owned by Baker Mayfield, my quarterback. <laughs> Who Colin Coward called undraftable. He went number one. I wish I had, like, I'm new to this industry. I guess I've been doing this for about a year and a half, this radio stuff. And I have not anticipated being in that situation. But now that I've seen it happen enough times, like, I feel like I need to be prepared. Like in football, as an athlete, I was prepared for if they were going to run a trick play or whatever. You had to have some preparation and have rules to follow. I need a line or I need something to say. I need to know what to do when I'm caught in that situation. So the clip that's circulating when I get into one of these little kerfuffles is of me on top, not at the end, me looking meek and like I've lost. So what oh, you is need, it? You need the equivalent of a safe word. That's what you're saying right now. <laughs> Kept not thrusting, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that might be what I go with. Like just completely throw it off uh, the interview off off the rails. If I say something and a guy comes at me tough, just hit him with a hip Kept thrusting. thrusting, not a fan. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Well, Fair enough. Curveball. I love it. Max Bredos is going to join us at the top of the hour talking about World Cup and some of his Hall of Fame impressions. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. And coming up next, Johnny Depp spends how much on wine? Much more than you realized. It's Adnan Verk and Dominique Foxworth. Don Libertard. And finally, three-time Oscar winner Daniel Day-Lewis has retired from acting. Good. Why good? Now, who cares about Daniel Day-Lewis? Takes himself way too seriously. I'm tired of him. The actor's actor. Right, please, get so deep inside the role. Please, Daniel Day-Lewis, go away. See how empty your life is without acting. Have fun. Enjoy it. Stugatz. The last good thing he's done. Go ahead, name it. I dare you. Go ahead, Lincoln. There will be blood. Oh, yeah, that was good. That was back in 2007, though. What have you done for me lately? This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. The Dan Lebatar Show on a Friday. The great Ben Lyons is listening. Ben is awesome. He's my good friend. You hear him on Cinephile. He does excellent work in ESPN LA 710. And Fine. he just texted me. Well, I know what it is, but I'm going to go ahead anyways. It's 10 bucks. I, I can keep track. Yeah, he wants okay. to know, and it's amazing that Ben was uh, on this, the Daniel Day-Lewis topic. I, I just want to kind of just get a quick shipping container, yay or nay. Do you agree with Stugatz that you don't ag- agree that he's the greatest actor currently living? Are you tired of his, you know, behavior, even though he's brilliant? So, Chris, you first. Daniel Day-Lewis, yes or no? You like him? No, you don't like him. I'm with Stugatz. Overrated. Ah, oh, it sucks. All right, uh, Billy? I don't think I've ever seen a movie of his. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, that's is a fine. He's never seen Gangs of New York or There Will Be Blood. No, I've never seen either of those. Okay, what else fine. has he done? But I, I respect Billy. He does wear the Cinefell shirts. I respect him for that. Uh, Roy, Daily Lewis, awesome, not awesome? He's awesome, but Tom Hanks is uh, pretty close. Wow. Okay, but as long as he's awesome, I'll give you that. And Mike Ryan, Daily Lewis, awesome, right? Good. Not Nick Cage good, but good. <laughs> Stuck in the cage again. Dominique, Daniel Day-Lewis, phenomenal, right? Meh. Oh, jeez. A lot of hype. He's he's got a, a messy vibe to him. It's a lot, a lot of hype. I feel like Ronaldo's a better actor than Daniel Day Lewis and a better football player than Messi. And then tell us exactly why he's so great, other than the fact that people tell us he's great. Yeah, I think he's on it. And I'm going to get a fine, even with the word I was about to use. I was about to say he's transformative, which immediately incites a fine. But honestly, he's transformative. I feel like he can do any role with the kind of range that he has, Chris. There's so many actors that you say, all right, he's really good, but he's only good in one role. Daniel Day Lewis can do my left foot. He can do There Will Be Blood. He can do Gangs of New York. He can do Lincoln. There's not many actors who have that kind of range. I feel like you're just saying words, though, kind of like with these, <laughs> with these draft prospects. Like he's got a good ceiling. He's got a good, uh, good coat. He's, he's coachable. Right. <laughs> it's a great engine it's, on that guy. Uh, right. It's all the synonyms you would use. <laughs> That's what I said with Daniel Day Lewis. He has a high motor. Uh, he's got great length. Uh, his aptitude is amazing. Ability to go both ways. 
Speaking of actors, what the hell's happened to Johnny Depp? He used to be a great actor. I'm going to count that as a second fine. Transitioning from one topic to another movie topic, <laughs> another fine. We're up I'll, to 11 bucks. I'll allow it. Can I'll you? allow it. Thank you very much. Yeah, because it's so interesting. Johnny Depp used to be a great actor, okay? Who doesn't love Donnie Brasco? I'm going to go around the room. Donnie, I don't even need to. Yeah, I know you guys all like Donnie Brasco. Now, for everybody who is not aware, he's had some financial issues. He spoke to Rolling Stone in an attempt to try to clear things up, but instead... It's even more shocking how much money he has spent. Now, this is the the management group, his former managers, okay? This is in response to a $25 million fraud lawsuit that Johnny Depp unleashed on them. However, TMG, this is how they painted him, Dominique, a compulsive spender who blew his $650 million fortune on mansions, yachts, cars, collectibles, and booze. And here's the best part of it. In a sprawling interview with Rolling Stone, Depp is setting the record straight. And how is he going to set the record straight when it comes to profligate spending? How is he going to clear up the fact people think he's crazy and is just spending money like a drunken sailor? He said, quote, it's insulting to say that I spent $30,000 on wine because it was far more. (laughs) I appreciate it. Johnny Depp is stunting till the end. Like that's that's all that is. That's a a move to walk in and say, well, while I don't have anything now, I once was bigger than all of you. Like I, I mean, I don't know why else you did. He's not dumb enough to think that that's going to garner him any favor. Like he's just trying to show off, right? He also took issue another TMG claim concerning the cost of shooting his friend and famed journalist Hunter S. Thompson's ashes out of a cannon. TMG claimed the send off cost three million. Depp sets the figure a tad higher. By the way, it was not three million to shoot Hunter into the blanking sky. It was five million dollars. <laughs> Mike, what are you supposed to do with Johnny Depp? The guy's a great actor. Now he's crazy. All I'm supposed to do is relive one of his finer moments when uh, he got in trouble with Australia's government. Australia is a wonderful island with a treasure trove of unique plants, animals, and people. It has to be protected. Australia is free of many pests and diseases that are commonplace around the world. That is why Australia has to have such strong biosecurity laws. And Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Thanks. <laughs> so depressing. Hall, Hall of Fame of apologies, Dominique. That's brilliant. I mean, it's it's depressing, and uh, I don't know. I I was just saying how Johnny Depp doesn't get sympathy. Like r- listening to that gives me some Johnny Je- Johnny Depp sympathy. Like I declare everything me wanna- when you enter Australia. It makes me want to turn on Australia, frankly. Like, who do they think they are? Relax. We'll like, get to that later. Max Brett on. Stu Gatz here is your home in ADT home. If not, then listen up. You need to get to ADT to help protect against break-ins, fire, even carbon monoxide. And now for a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just twenty eight ninety nine a month for the most trusted name in home security. That's just a dollar a day. You spend way more than a buck on your morning coffee. ADT is the first security company to help you keep safe at home and when you're on the go with the new ADT Go app. ADT Go has some great features like a family locator, private messaging, automatic check-ins, and safe driving reports. It even includes an SOS button with 24-7 emergency response. And if you need more of a reason to buy, you get ADT Go with a purchase of any security system. Seriously, guys, it's a great deal. Protect yourself and your family. Do it right now. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. ADT, tested, trusted, proven, with 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply, excludes taxes and fees, applies to traditional services only, certain markets excluded, License available at ADT.com. Don Lebatard. That was Will Smith's magic wand for a long time. Just get a bunch of things on the screen that people will notice and I could just be among them. <laughs> Hell, that's my trick too. I surround myself with funny looking and funny acting people so that people won't notice that I'm kind of dry by comparison. That's what like all of you, all of you weirdos. Like that's what I do. I'm surrounded by orcs.
I'm sitting here blaming Will Smith, and all I'm doing is seeing him right in the mirror. Stugats. I'm jealous now of Will Smith because he did it so much better. I'm just sitting here with you and my dad. I'm your yeah. or my dad and a troll. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was good. I mean, I finger pointed him. <laughs> I've arrived at a point yes! where I'm yes! celebrating jokes against me. Yes, I just called you a troll, and Stugats saluted me by pointing one of his sausage fingers at me. <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pinto Performance Line. And now, your Sports Center update. Greg Hardy, who was recently signed by the UFC, injured his knee playing in the American Arena League game. Cavaliers GM Kobe Altman said he and LeBron James's camp have a good dialogue already established on whether he intends to pick up his player option for next season. For all the latest updates and information, tune in. The Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. That is Dominic Foxworth. I'm Adnan Virk. We are joining forces today on the Dan Levitar Show with Stu Gatz on ESPN Radio. Thankfully, the shipping container is here with us, and they can offer some calm to what can be turbulent waters. Mikey C. is here with me in Bristol. We've all felt the show has gone particularly well these first two hours, and the great Max Bredos is going to take us to a higher level momentarily. But Mikey C. opining that this show has felt how so far, Mike? I think it's been great. It sounded, you know, it sounds fu- like it's been a good show, but I feel like we've been on since six in the morning. Like this has been a telethon of a show. Dominique, would you like to weigh in? Do you also feel like this show has taken six hours to do so far? Well, I mean, I think that's an insult. Like the show's <laughs> supposed to go fast. Like when I've done this and again, I haven't been doing this for a while. Everyone says, Hey, this show's really fl- flown by. It's been fun. Like that means that this show has been terrible, Mike. So just be honest. Don't don't, don't know, go with your, your sideways people. insult. Just let me know. If it's trash, it's trash. I'll get better. I can take coaching. Chris, has this also been a great show that feels interminable? The rare great show that takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they're going to describe this one. There's so many words to describe my buddy Max Bredos. He's the best. He and I both started at ESPN in May of 2010. He was my lone remaining friend in Bristol, Connecticut. He is now left for warmer climbs. He's in Los Angeles crushing it. Check out the Max and Herc podcast, all your World Cup coverage. Listen on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. And nobody's better at two things in the world, World Cup coverage and Sean Connery impressions. Max, welcome to the program, my friend. Hey, hey, Dominic Adnan. If you say crushing it... Uh that translates to drinking beer, eating tacos, and sleeping. Then I am crushing it in L.A. 100%. LA, LAFC, baby. I want the updates momentarily. <laughs> but everyone wants to know about Lionel Messi. All right, coming in, some thought I'd heard, Max, was that if he wins this, if Argentina wins the World Cup, he'd go down as the greatest ever. Instead, an absolute catastrophe so far from them, the first true stunner, and that it looks like they're not going to advance. What in the world has happened to Messi and team? He didn't even get a shot in yesterday's game. It's it's bad, and he. I don't. I, I don't think you can even start debating putting him in the best ever category because some guys find a way, and some guys have that eye of the tiger, and they get it. I will say this: it's been pretty stunning. He can never get the blame, even after that defeat. People were going, "Well, it's not Messi's fault. It's all the team around him. It's uh, there's too much of a burden. I feel bad. He's been crying. No, no, no. That's 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 all part of it." You got to deliver. I mean, you can compare it to basketball. LeBron James has terrible players around him. He does it. Cristiano Ronaldo does not have great players around him, and he finds results. Lionel Messi doesn't, and that's going to be part of his legacy because, to me, he has. And I think we've coddled him for too long, and that's fine. He's a great player, but at this, at this very high level, he hasn't delivered, and those are the facts. I mean, I think this goes without asking, but based on your reaction, it seems like you're a Ronaldo guy over Messi. I, I was a Messi fan for, for as long as I can remember, and I, I've always waited for him to have a challenge, and he, 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 he always kind of takes the safe route, which is fine. But I always loved Argentina growing up. I was a huge Maradona fan. I was, uh, everyone who went through Argentina, I loved. I loved the colors. That was my team that I support in the World Cup when I wasn't supporting the United States, and that still rings true. I just get very frustrated when I see that. It's not, his, it's not all his fault. It's certainly not, but some guys are doing it with similar resources, and finding a way to get get those results. Max Brunos right now is joining us on the Dan Levitar Show. Adnan Verk and Dominique Foxworth in for Dan and Stu. You know I was pulling for my guy Mo Salah, Max. I was so pumped up. This story that I had read, and I'm sure you know this song, the 1990s Brit pop hit, Good Enough by the band Dodgy. Are you familiar with that song? Wait, what's, what's, 
It, the, the, <laughs> so, the, 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 the song is called Good Enough, and it's by the band Dodgy. Brit Pop in the 1990s? I'll have to hear a few bars, but I'm pretty sure I know it. Okay, regardless, they, they sing a song towards Mo Salah from the Anfield stands, which I thought was very interesting. And the article, this was from Sports Illustrated, saying, at a time when Britain is fighting rising Islamophobia, the outpouring of affection for an Egyptian national superstar who is proud in public about his Muslim faith cannot go undernoticed. Having said that, Egypt, I don't know if you had them going to the next round, but Mo Salah did score on that penalty, but unfortunately Egypt is done. Were they underachieving, or is this not surprising that Mo Salah, as great as he is, as talented as he is for Liverpool, Egypt is not going to go to the next round. It's a, it, look, the injury he suffered in the Champions League, I, I, I would have initially put them through in that group, but then when that happened, that, that I don't know if he was ever quite ready to play, and he did play. If you're not pl- playing, if you're not playing the first game of the World Cup, you're not su- su- suddenly going to be ready to go in three days' time. But he did play, so he was never quite well, and Egypt maybe got caught in the big spotlight of the World Cup. It's the first time they've been there in 28 years, so I can't imagine the pressure. And Egypt is not is a, is a massive country, a huge population, and soccer crazed. And I think all of that, you put into a blender, it kind of got to the Egyptians and Mo Salah. They, they could have been a little bit more, I think, aggressive. I think they have some players that could have complicated things for the Russians when they played them, but they never quite came out of their shell. And Lesson learned. I hope they're there in four years, and I hope Salah there because he's a lovely guy, and he has done so much this year. It's just a little it's bittersweet, certainly, after a great season that it ends this way for him in Egypt. <laughs> there have been uh, quite a few surprising results so far. I think coming into the tournament, we all had our teams that we were looking forward to watch, but given how some teams have played, who would you say are the most fun teams to watch uh, as we approach the, the knockout round? By the way, Dominic, did you know that song? Nah, I'm a, I'm, I'm no, a hip-hop okay, good, guy. Good. I mean, uh, Ad, Adnan just sucked all the fun out of that. Like, I mean, who wants to listen to that? Get out of here, Adnan. No, what? Now it's stuck in my craw for the rest of the day. But, uh, I mean, it, it, had, it had a little bop to it, though. I mean, to be real, yeah, I, I, I could listen to it later, but I, I'd never heard it before. I'm going to be stuck in L.A. traffic here pretty soon, so maybe I'll just have that on repeat and maybe I'll flesh it out a little bit. But uh, uh, to answer your question, I'm, I'm, I want to see Senegal play again because they, they gave me a real thrill. They are... They are exciting in the front. They, they, they wore out their opponent, uh, Poland, in the first game. And, you know, I, I think African teams have the potential, but they always hit a hurdle navigating this tournament. And this team kind of has that look. So I want to see a little bit more of them, and I want to see if Mexico perform. Mexico was a thrilling performance. I think their guy, Irving Lozano, who's nicknamed Chucky after the little doll in the uh, Child's Play movie, which is a great one. There's so many great nicknames. That one's right at the top. Peru have a guy nicknamed the Baby Seal, La Foquita. So, unfortunately, they don't go on. But the <laughs> Baby Seal? Is great. Anyway, not to get off track. Yeah. That's what I do sometimes. Oh, no, that's uh, not off track. Next- that is certainly on track. That's the best insight I've gotten about <laughs> about uh, old footy all week. I love it. I'm writing those down. <laughs> the Baby Seal and then Chucky. Chucky, as they say in Mexico. But those two teams I'm most excited about. But it really depends on how they play in game number two, and that's coming up here in the next couple of days. All the favorites look fragile. Germany certainly. Germany could be officially out of the tournament if they don't get the right results tomorrow. And then Spain, I think they are good, but they have to make some adjustments. They have too many of the older generation that just can't keep the pace with some of the younger, exciting players. And then uh, I think France, I kind of pushed a little bit ahead of the pack with their game yesterday. And who does that leave me with? France, Spain, oh, and Brazil, who did not look great at all today. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm, that's going to be a wait and see. Max, talk to me about England. My mom moved from Pakistan to London when she was 10. All my aunts, my uncles, my litany of cousins, both wholesome and degenerate, are telling me this is the year for England. Harry Kane, in whom we believe, haven't won a World Cup since 1966. Biggest underachievers in the world. And England finally do something at this thing? I was really excited uh, for England until I went to the, uh, the Cock and Bull pub here in uh, West L.A. or Venice, and this English guy came up to me and he goes, Hey, bro, would you have him in either? Have you seen how the old three lines? We're going to win the whole cup. There's no doubt about it in my mind. I'm like, the whole thing. You're going to win the whole thing. Yeah, you're right. Harry Kane. They let Ali. And I'm like, no. And I was just delusional. Delusional. What? But he was just going on and on. I go, okay, how about making the quarterfinals? And then that just kind of soured me a little bit. I was You've been really sitting all in on, on that these. accent the whole interview? Just yeah, sitting on it? Yeah, he like, was, I, that was him. That was him talking. I need more sentences in that accent. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> well, 
Hey, you got your Dominic, wish, Dominic. Because... Dominic, get out, get out in the cock and bull, mate. Get out in the cock and bull. Get you a, a tall pint that you'll pay for, and then we'll go watch England take on, uh, I don't know who's playing next. Doesn't matter. They're going to the final. So it was like that. Well, I understand how that would sour you because the English can be overbearing with their soccer. But with a minute to go, nobody else does a better Sean Connery impression than Max Ooh. Bredos. I don't know if you can channel Sean or if he's there sitting next to you, but what do you think Sean Connery thinks of the World Cup so far? Hold on a second. Sean! Sean, come to the phone real quick. <laughs> Sean! Sean, put it down. Put it down. No, okay. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello, this is Sir Sean Connery. Uh, can I help you? Uh, hi, Sean. Thanks for coming on with us today. You're listening to the Dan Lebitor Show. It's Adnan Burke, Dominic Foxworth. What do you think of the World Cup so far? I don't watch the World Cup. I watch tennis and I watch golf. Um, well, can you football, just chime in a little bit? Is, yeah. <laughs> football is a sport for little children. Golf <laughs> is a man's sport. I'm about to tee off at Chevy Oak Hills here at 2, o- 2 o'clock with my old friend, George Lazenby, back from the grave. Let me tell you, it's going to be an 18 holes from the heavens. Sean, have you ever worked with Johnny Depp? Apparently he spent $650 million of his fortune. How uh, thrifty were you with your money over the years? I've saved every penny. Saved every penny. It's in a, it's in, under lock and key in a Swiss bank account. And let me tell you something about Johnny Depp. Taught him everything he knows. He owes me every every iota of his Hollywood career to old slow Sean. Hey, John, you want to talk to Michael Caine? I think he's sitting right there. <laughs> if you want to talk to Michael Caine, you must only say... A few words at a time. But you don't go at a faster pace than that. Michael Caine used to talk like this in the 1960s. Now he talks very, very slowly. I want England to go all the way, possibly this year, if not in four years in Qatar in the Middle East. Oh, that was bad. Sorry. (laughs) That's That's a terrible way to wrap it up, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> M. Bredos ESPN. That's his Twitter handle. He's the voice of LAFC. You can check out the Max and Herc podcast, all your World Cup coverage. Listen on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Max, you're the best. Thank you. Johnny, Adam, great chat with you. Ryan, I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. <laughs> An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Ah! Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebertard. Let's go. I'm tired of this. The three of them. Bashing Pat Riley. I mean, LeBron James hadn't won a single thing. Until Pat Riley was running the organization that he played for. Stugatz. And then Pat Riley was running the organization that he played for. And what happened? Four straight final appearances. Two NBA championships. Should have been a third NBA championship. But LeBron was terrified to post up J.J. Barea in that first season. Hey! And what did he do to Wade? Do you not know how a jack-in-the-box works? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Radio. Oh, Love Weezer. And they're oh, back, gosh. right? That's the biggest thing. Yeah, I'm actually in the mood to play them because, okay, well, is I I have to pay for a fine. I was already turning yeah. my mic on. No, no, All Mike, right. Mike, it's fine, it's fine. I'll cover you on this one. Go well, ahead. I'm Let's actually, talk I'm seeing Weezer today, and it's only the second time I've seen Weezer, even though they're one of my favorite bands. They're a top three band for me. They're the reason why I fell in love with rock music, really. And oh. It's a great double bill. They're on the same bill as the Pixies, so I'm super excited. Well, that, it wasn't a fine, but then that last part, that was a double bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the Pixies mentioned. That's what it was. Double bill? Yeah. But the just picture me and Mike Ryan joined by a love of Rivers Cuomo. Like, who would have expected that prior to this day? Anyone? <sighs> okay, fine. I'll, I'll move on. Billy, uh, before we get to the soccer talk with Dominique and soccer fans, what has raised his ire, I want to get an update on Lewis Brinson. Billy, is he hitting his weight? This is the, for those who aren't aware of this bit here, he plays for the Marlins. Bit. He's a young player. Okay, not a bit. I'm it's about, a campaign. This, a campaign. I apologize. This movement we're trying here. He's a highly touted young player who has struggled this season. Billy, is he hitting his weight yet? He's, uh, he's currently hitting 181, but, and he weighs 195, but here's the good news. Okay. He's a career 169 hitter, so he's hitting, you know, almost 20 points over his career average. So that's good. It's a career year for him. 
And I know you're you're wondering what the next phase is because we've had multiple phases of this campaign. If <laughs> you want to get him into the All Star game, like we all do, especially uh, Adnan, he wants to get him in. Yeah. Go to AllStarGame.com. You can vote for Lewis Brinson. Send him to the All Star game. He's an outfielder for the National League. So this is the campaign that we run. We were trying to get people to take signs to different stadiums because we've been in four, no, five stadiums now. We've been we've been in Minnesota twice, San Diego once, San Francisco once, Cincinnati, and Baltimore. So we were taking signs, getting people to, to, you know, spread the word to get this campaign going. And then I said, you know what? I can just comment a bunch of times on HQ, and that's a good way to spread the word. Because like a million people play HQ every night. HQ is yeah. the app. The trivia app? Yeah, yeah. That's the one. So I started doing that a little bit, and, uh, and no one was biting. And then, you know, it really caught fire yesterday. I had like 20, 30 mentions of having people to vote for Lewis Brinson in the All-Star game. And then... The great fans of Lewis Brinson yes. also ventured out on their own without me even asking them to. And they went on ESPN's NFL draft show that was on uh, Periscope, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they were commenting in there. They crashed the Ringers draft thing that was going on. They were all over the place yesterday during the draft trying to get this word out. So I'm expecting when the next vote totals come out next Monday for him to easily be in the top 15, which he has not made an appearance in yet. But I think we have good momentum going to get Lewis Brinson into the All-Star game right now. Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, this is this is the power of the show. This is what American sports is all about. A guy who has felt the love here and the adulation and it has been surging ever since. If you get the top 15 for Lewis Brinson, that's amazing. No, no, no. Oh, he, so, he's going to start. I'm assuming that you voted, Adnan, right? Of course. Have you, yeah, voted you, you can vote up to five times. This is the best part. Did you vote today? Go to allstargame.com. Let's all vote right now together. Okay, let's all yeah, vote Dominique, right have you voted? How many times have you voted, Dominique? Right now. Um, None. What? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i not a big fan of the campaign. What? Why? <laughs> Why not? I mean, well, I mean, it, What's it, wrong? It, who, who do you want to play in the outfield? Bryce Harper? Uh, Come on. I mean, yeah. Nick Bryce Marcakis? Harper, obviously. Give me, give me some Bryce. But I mean, I just, I, I guess when you first introduced this campaign, you showed some trepidation because you admitted that you might think that it might not feel so great for uh, Lewis Brinson to be a part of this campaign. And I don't know. It kind of soured me on it. Oh, no, no, no. But he's really turned it on. No, 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 no. He's no, turned no. it on. I got to say that I've heard you try to claim this surge, but you also, everyone knows that this show famously discusses how random baseball is. So baseball's random, but this random occurrence of this surge you are taking credit for because you've brought some extra attention to him. I, I don't know. I, I've been withholding my vote. I apologize, Billy. I love you. But I don't know how I feel about this campaign. Got to be real. I don't know that you love me, but I'm going to say this. He's raised his batting average 20 points since this campaign started. And you, you you saw what was going on with him in San Francisco. He's the captain of this team right now. He's brought this team together, and we're only about uh, 15 games under 500 right now. Holy. Yeah. Sounds, right. sounds like Dominique's not Brince in. He's Brince out. Yeah, you're Brince mm. out right now. How can I get you Brince in? What can I do? You're right. I don't love you, but um, Brent, there's nothing you could do to get me Brent's in. I'm Brent's out until Brent's is in. Once Brent's is Brent's in, then I'm Brent's in. If Brent's in is Brent's out, then I gotta be Brent's out with Brent's in. Oh, Brent's in's Brent's in. He's not Brent's out. There's no Brent's out about this campaign. Brent's in is Brent's in. You said Brinson was Brinson out when you first brought up the Brinson campaign because Brinson doesn't want to be a Bryn mockery, which is what you're kind of trying to turn Bryn into. Here's what I thought was happening. I thought Brinson was Brinson out, but then I realized that the people that were Brinson out were the people that were discussing the campaign without actually hearing from Brinson. And then the more oh. I see it, Brinson seems to be buying in to the whole campaign, and he's going to make it to the All Star game. That's it. Right, well, Not even I, top fifteen. It. I thought that Brinson was Brinson out. If it's just the Marlins and Major League Baseball that are Brent South, then I'm Brent Sin. Anything I'm firing is, up. Tell me how to vote. Dominique, anything is Brent possible. AllStarGame.com. Please vote right now, Dominique. As we, as you do that, I want you to also get ready for your flaming take on soccer fans. That's coming up next. Adnan Verk and Dominique Foxworth. It is the Dan Lebetard Show with Stu Gotts on ESPN Radio. Soccer fans next. Dan Lebetard. America's fastest growing sports show. Stu Gotts. Cause when you start from zero, and you have one viewer, you're growing fast. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. That is Dominique Foxworth put on the poll. Does he sound like Morgan Freeman or not? <laughs> Adnan I'm Burke, with, along no. to Dominique. But listen, we'll go around the room here. Chris, does he sound like Morgan Freeman? And particularly, he sounds like Morgan Freeman when he doesn't want to sound like Morgan Freeman, right? I think it's a perfect Morgan Freeman. And you're right, especially when he doesn't try to do it. Billy, does he sound like Morgan Freeman? He does, but he uses too many contractions. Like, I don't think Morgan Freeman ever has used a contraction in his life. That's an excellent point. Mike Ryan, does he sound like Morgan Freeman? He does. 
He does. I, I've been trying to get him to read the the end of Shawshank Redemption, that <laughs> monologue, that I hope monologue. He refuses. I don't, so, like, where where is this Morgan Freeman money? Like, I feel like there is a Morgan Freeman size hole in the voiceover game. I'm waiting. Somebody, because I don't think I sound like Morgan Freeman, but I would certainly take that Morgan cash if somebody wants me to read about penguins or something. Oh, Morgan. Roy, Roy does he sound like Morgan Freeman? No, he does not. Well, oh, geez, listen, wait, I just like got a great hot idea. there. Yeah. I have a great idea. Uh, uh, Dominique, you have a computer near you? I do, sir. Pull up the Wikipedia for penguins. <laughs> and just okay. read it aloud. <laughs> All right, it's going to take me a minute. Maybe we should go to something else first. You, you have to give your hot take on soccer fans. We've been building up to this, Dominique. So we're just multitask. Oh, I mean, it's not it's not even that hot of a take, but it's just before the show, we're talking, we're getting ready for the show, and uh, our good friend, Mike Ryan, is giving his opinions on the beautiful game. Oh, and- what a world-class finish by Nigeria! Yeah! Oh, yeah. what class! 2-0 two, yeah. two right now for Iceland. 2-0! Oh, yeah. who's, who's that? That's my man, Musa. I remember Musa. He was awesome for Moscow back in the day. But anyway, I think... I think that the, it's the words chosen. It's like world class, nil, like all that stuff is just gross. And I appreciate that Mike tries to be a kind soccer fan, but I hear the judgment in his voice because if you say zero or you you call it a game or you say the score or the at the end of the game, you can hear the judgment in a voice and they treat you like you're a second class citizen. That's all I want from my soccer fans is uh, just be inclusive. It's a fixture and a pitch. <laughs> See, that's it. you, sir. Should be ashamed of yourself. You know better. Like, that's just... I do know better. And uh, Billy has had this take that he actually doesn't mind soccer, which surprised me because he's been super negative throughout the World Cup, but he doesn't actually have a problem with the sport. No, it's not soccer that I hate. And I thought that I hated soccer, and then I realized I like soccer. Like, I play soccer sometimes. It's fun. I play FIFA. It's fun. I hate soccer fans, (laughs) and they make me hate soccer more. Because it's like, I can't be apathetic towards soccer. I can't just be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not going to... Because then they start lecturing me on how great soccer is and the world loves soccer. And the reason I don't love soccer is because I'm American. And it's like, you're American too. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's all, there's like, you know, hidden condescension. And if I and don't like no... soccer, I have to like soccer. And it's like, it's we don't, we don't all have to like the same <laughs> things. We can like different things. There's no admission of bad soccer either. So like, I... Grew up playing football and I like football and all foot American football fans acknowledge when there is a trash football game on. But when there's a trash soccer game on, no soccer fan, they just say, you just don't understand. You don't get the beauty. No, sometimes the game are trash. Sometimes the teams back up and they're playing for a draw and it's a sucky game. But soccer fans won't admit it. They just act like we don't get it. Like we are not true soccer connoisseurs. Get out of here. That's an excellent point. I love baseball, and I know the pitcher's duels are boring as hell. And I'm not here telling people, oh, you're missing a great pitcher's duel right now. <laughs> I know that you're bored. I, I don't have to sell you on baseball. That was another thing. Mike tried to do this thing earlier this week where he wanted to do like a switch where like he watches golf for Stugatz and Stugatz just watches golf for him or he watches baseball and whatever. So we're switching sports so we can talk to each other about sports. I'm like Cultural sports exchange. Yeah. I told he, he's like, isn't this a great idea? I'm like, no, because then I have to watch soccer games I'm not interested in, and then I have to hear you talk to me about baseball that you're not interested in. I don't want to do either of those things. I Billy's can't... best point is the amount of condescension. He's right. Soccer is great, and Mike Ryan is right to support the game, and people are into it. I love their passion for it. But the problem because when me, guys like me and Billy who love baseball got to hear, ah, baseball's an old sport. Baseball's dying. Nobody cares about baseball. Soccer's better. So that That's what becomes the issue. Well, it's, it's well not that those soccer's are all facts. A- I mean, you just said a bunch of facts. <laughs> See, you I, knew like, I knew Mike would tell me all of a sudden, hey, listen, soccer's the number four sport in this country. Kids don't follow baseball. They follow the EPL now. That's where it becomes the issue, that breeding ground. If we could just I enjoy mean, the sport, see, it's fine. See, I, we, don't, we don't want you on our side, Adnan, because you're bringing us down with these facts about baseball. <laughs> like, it's true. Uh, I Give me soccer over baseball. I would love to be a condescending soccer person rather than a uh, walking relic, uh, a.k.a. a baseball fan. It, it makes me a, a little sad because I'm not like that. I, I, I want to be inclusive. I understand how soccer fans are, and that's a bit of a, a turnoff. But I, I, it leads me to wonder if soccer ever gets as big as a lot of soccer zealots claim it will be. But just look at the demos. It's a growing sport. Look at what, uh, all right. the kids oh, yeah, that play. That is also a great soccer thing. Look at the demos. Yeah. I'm sorry oh. to interrupt. Uh, kids play youth soccer. Just wait. All those kids. <laughs> You'll be playing soccer when they're older. Oh, my God. Soccer's been taken over for years. Yeah, but if like the sport ever becomes, like say, a big three sport, okay? Yeah. 
It's not going to be as cool to be a soccer fan as that's it is right thing. now. That's it, the thing. They it's love, like a secret society. They love the fact that no one watches soccer, so they can give you all these things that nobody <laughs> knows. Like, There's so many random things I can talk to you about. That doesn't make me cool because I know random facts about obscure things. And I don't feel like they even want people to like soccer, if I'm being completely honest with you, because they're not a very welcoming bunch. Like, if I were to try to watch soccer, I feel like there'd just be Snickers left and right when I get something wrong talking about the game. Oh, yeah, what an I mean, appalling it, it, challenge in the box. That's a, a deserved it, PK. Have you guys <sighs> seen this number 19 for Iceland? It wasn't. A, that was a flop. He's a dreamboat. Yeah, listen, flop, if there's one team to root for, by the way, Iceland. Are they not the team, Mike Ryan? People, listen, this is a country with the size of Peoria. 350,000 people, and Iceland's in the World Cup. Population the size of Corpus Christi, Texas. 99% of the people watching in television in Iceland were watching World Cup soccer at one point during the Euros. 8%. Of Iceland's entire population was in one of the stadiums. It is That's a fine. great story. No, it's not. I mean, they, they, I understand it. It's cute. I'm not an underdog guy. Get out of here. They play a style of soccer that is, <laughs> that is part of the problem, frankly. They play this slow down defensive nonsense that I just don't really like. Also, penguins, a group of aquatic flightless birds, they live almost exclusively in the southern hemisphere. No? Anything? Morgan, Morgan Freeman reads it a uh, lot slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah slow yeah. it down. Right, Try it again. It's okay. Try it again. <laughs> Penguins, a group of aquatic flightless birds, they live almost exclusively in the southern hemisphere. Oh my with only god! Only one species, the Galapagos penguin, found north of the equator. Oh man! Oh man! All right, so right, good! That, All right, that, 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 right that, that come good. on! You where'd you find the clip of March of the Penguins? <laughs> I didn't know you could play that. <laughs> the Morgan Freeman of ESPN forever. And ever. That is Dominic Foxworth. We're well, going to come not, back. So, let's not describe him yeah. that way. There's recent developments on <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. just fair. Yeah. Right, right. And, 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 and voice and only. And, and, and there is no behavior and whatsoever and that is and emblematic and of Morgan Freeman. Just voice only. That's it.